Hello and welcome to another episode of PC Building Simulator. We're back in free build mode today. The last time we were in free build, we built the best PCs you can get for $1,000 in PC Building Simulator version 1.8. If you missed that video, I'll put a link up in the upper right hand corner. Speaking of missing videos, if you subscribe to my channel, you won't miss any videos. So be sure to go down there, click the subscribe button, ring the bell, and you'll get notified as soon as a video goes live. And it would help me out greatly. I would greatly appreciate it. And now that that's out of the way, today we're going to be building the best PC you can build for $2,000. And just like last time, we're going to build an AMD and we're going to build an Intel. And just like last time, I have one already built and ready to go. So we're going to build one together and then we're going to put them against each other. Let's get started with this build though. Because we're going $2,000, we're going to use a little bit nicer case than we used in the $1,000 build. We're going to use the Fractal Design Focus G. And we'll just use this black one because the color ones are a lot more expensive this is a $50 case if you've noticed as I've pointed out in other videos in free build mode the case prices are off this is a $50 case 24 plus 13 plus 13 equals $50 not $76 so again this build is going to be off by a little bit if we leave the fans in let's get this case taken apart and we will start putting this build together okay so let's start with the motherboard we're gonna go with the gigabyte x570 gaming x let's see here here it is this all black motherboard it is hundred and seventy dollars just in case you want to keep track. We're also, unlike last time, we're going to be adding more RAM to these builds. Last time we only had one stick because we were going for $1,000. This time we're going to put in two. We're going to put in two sticks of G-Skill Flare X. 8 gig, 3200 megahertz. There we go. And for the processor, the processor, let's do fits this PC. Saves a little bit of time. For the processor, we're going to go with the Ryzen 7 3800X. The 8-core 16-thread beast. There we go. There we go. So, this is going to have to go. We're not going to have space in this case. Four drives, unfortunately. And these fans are going to have to go. But we're going to put one in the back. We're going to put one in the back. What were those case fans? I don't remember. They were fractal design. Here we go. The Dynamic X2 GP12. So we definitely need a rear case fan. Suck out that heat. Grab some thermal paste, we'll get that on the processor, and we can go ahead and we'll get our cooler on there. We're gonna use the EVGA CLC 280. Should keep things nice and cool. And maybe, just maybe, we'll get some overclock on the CPU. Hopefully we can. We'll have to see. As for the power supply, we're gonna go with the thermal take Smart Pro 850. So we've got plenty of power for everything we need to do. Next, let's get some storage in here. Storage. We're going to go for the Gigabyte Aorus M.2 drive. And we're going to go for this 256 gig because we just really need it for a boot drive. We're also going to add a 1 terabyte gigabyte SSD for mass storage. So here we go. And this thing's only 90 bucks. 
So we'll have nice, fast game storage. Oh, don't look over there. Don't look over there. We've got the Intel, the Intel build over there. You didn't see it, did you? Okay, just checking. Just checking. You couldn't tell what was in there. <laughs> All right, now we need a graphics card. And unfortunately, this game does not go along with whatever graphics cards are going for in real life pricing. So unfortunately, the Zotac 2070 Mini, Super Mini, the 2070 Super Mini is going for $740 in this game. Now I know, because I recently bought a 2070 Super, not the Zotac, I know that you can get those for about 530 bucks. Currently, currently speaking, they'll change in the future, so don't go banking on that. So this is a little overpriced, but it's the best we could do. It's gonna be an excellent gaming system. Let's get this thing cabled up though, and then we can see what it's really gonna do. Let's do some red cables, since this thing is AMD. Let's see, do we wanna do some black and red? We'll get everything cabled up. Then we'll run a 3D Mark test. We'll see what we get. And then we'll probably try to overclock things and see if we can get any better. So let's get this case put all back together. Don't be looking. Don't be looking at the Intel build over there. Get this case all put back together. We'll get a USB drive in here. And let's power this thing up. We can hop into the BIOS. And let's turn our XMP on. Make sure we're booting from the right drive. We'll let the operating system install and then we'll get some software on here so we can check things out. Do we need to change lighting? Sure, why not? Let's put the lighting app on. Let's get 3D Mark on there, of course. OCCT, we're gonna do some overclocking and the GPU tuner. Let's do lighting. Let's do lighting first. Let's just make everything red. There we go. I'm going to get 3D Mark running. This is going to be our baseline score. We'll see if we can make this better. But as soon as I've got a score, I will come right back. All right, so there's our baseline score, 8,694. As you can tell over here, under the graphics test, we weren't hitting 60 FPS. We're going to see if we can change that, but before we do, before we go overclocking, so look over here at the retail value, we're at $2,013. We know we're off because of the fan in the back. That is, for whatever re reason, added in incorrectly. Over here, we've got our Intel build. It is exactly the same price. It's exactly a $2,000 build. Let's take a look at what's inside of it. So we've got an ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming SLI motherboard. It's $170, same price as the Gigabyte X570 Gaming X. We've got the Intel Core i7-8700K, which is the same price as the Ryzen 7 3800X. The difference between them is the 8700K has 6 cores, 12 threads. The 3800X has 8 cores, 16 threads. So 2 more cores, 4 more threads. Everything else is basically the same. We've gone with Ripjaws for RAM because technically that's made for Intel and the Flare X is made for Ryzen, but everything else is the same. Everything else. And if you look over here, here's our baseline test for 3D Mark. I've gone ahead and run one. It's 8,476. I can't even talk. And this one was 8,694. So a little bit more probably because of the two extra cores and four extra threads. I'm gonna step away, I'm gonna overclock both 
of these systems. I'm gonna overclock both of them because neither one of them at stock would hit 60 FPS. So we're gonna see if we can make that happen. I'm gonna step away. And as soon as I've got both of these things overclocked, I will come back and I will show you guys before we run the 3D Mark test. I've gotten both of these systems overclocked. The Intel I was able, let's go check it out. The Intel I was able to actually overclock the CPU to five gigahertz, 5,000 megahertz. Which is a pretty nice little overclock. And the GPU, we've gone 490 megahertz over the base clock. And here's our temps. They're hot, but nothing's throttling. So we're pretty good on that. For the Ryzen build, I was not able to overclock the CPU at all. Even the smallest of overclocks would cause this thing to thermal throttle. It wouldn't actually shut it down, it would just throttle. So I've left it at stock, but I was able to overclock the GPU not quite as much. This one is 465 megahertz over the core, over the base clock. So we're at 127.7% over. And what were we on this other one? 129, so just not that much of a difference. Not that much. So let's close this out. Let's get 3D Mark running on this machine. And then let's close this out. And we will get 3D Mark running on this machine. And as soon as both of these have a score or if they blue screen or something silly, I'll come right back and show you. All right, so they're both done. The Intel system got a 10,841 and it originally got an 8,476. So it definitely went over 60 FPS, did pretty good job. No complaints, no complaints. The Ryzen system, however, did just a little bit better. 10,961 up from 8,694. I think that's just because of those two extra cores, four extra threads. Possibly the 9900K would do better in a head-to-head -head against the 3800X. The problem is, is the 9900K in this game is $730, which completely blows the $2,000 budget. Completely. So either one of them, neither one of them are a slouch. If you're an Intel person, the 8700K, obviously, is not a bad way to go. And if you're AMD, the 3800X is not a bad way to go. Both of them are 400 bucks in the game, so whichever one you choose, you can't go wrong. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified as soon as a video goes live. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay safe. Be sure to wash your hands. And I will see you in the next episode.